Like just in one shot, just peel it off. You can do that with a drumette too. Hell no, you can't, dude. You can't stick a drumette in your mouth, give a good suck, and then get all the meat off. Don't ever, don't ever. Yeah, we're just gonna start this shit live. The only time I caught the Holy Ghost was when I was in church drinking. Like they're two dumb dudes. Welcome to the latest episode of Sarah and Chris's Movie Therapy Podcast. All right, so uh, which one of them dudes on that hat are you, sir? You know, you know who no, that damn is. well you ain't Vegeta. You're just the fuck I am. King Kai ain't on there. So which one are you? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> fucking kid, boo. If I was, but nah, my guy right in the front. Uh, you, the only thing you got in the only thing you got in common with Majin Buu is you, you know exactly what. Love to eat everything. The <laughs> shit the skinny one did too. Just saying. <laughs> so okay, so why Vegeta? Why do you why do you uh uh why do you connect so much with Vegeta? I just like his attitude. I think the fact that he he can like he knows he's strong, but he knows he's not the he also knows he's not the strongest. There's still yeah. Goku. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, and, think um, eats, you think it eats him up inside to know that he ain't the strongest. I and think Goku. He, Goku's trying, but he's not really trying. Yeah, I think it eats up Vegeta because he knows that like, Vegeta's thing is his anger. If yeah. he could just let go, and, like I know it sounds crazy, but if you if you ever done something, even playing sports, fights, whatever case may be, mm-hmm. and you were actually enjoying doing it, your energy's different. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So and and because like Vegeta likes to fight because he's a fucking asshole. Yeah. Goku fake because he wants to get better at it. That's why he's always laughing like, oh, that was a good hit. You know what I'm saying? And then yeah. he goes back in there and charges up. But I just, I like Vegeta just because he just doesn't care. <laughs> he's like, right, he'll but, do whatever. All right, but do you think Vegeta actually enjoys it? Or do you feel like he feels like he needs to do it in order to 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 prove something? That's I what think I he, think about with Vegeta. I think he needs to do it. I think, it's, I think it's his ego thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I, I, I don't know if he necessarily enjoys the fighting. I think he just does it. You know, you know how some people who do shit, not necessarily because they like it, but just because they're good at it. If they can, yeah. Yeah. So I think he, that's him. Where I actually think Goku actually enjoys it. Yeah. You know? Okay, I can, I can see that. Because yeah. um, even, I seen a post the other day, and it's actually got like all the characters, and like they're all like in their character. If Vegeta's off to the side with the angry look like, take the picture and leave me alone. But that's yeah. his character, you know what I'm saying? He, yeah. He's like the Wolverine of Dragon Ball Z. Oh yeah, no, okay. in my opinion, that. same same hair and everything. <laughs> All right. With that being said, welcome to the latest episode of Surat and Chris's Movie Therapy Podcast. It's your boy Surat, aka Makazi, and your boy Chris Brown, aka Red Ford Delta. What everybody doing out there? Well, you know, if you listen to this podcast, you would know that this podcast is off the hinges, just like the door to Chris's office. <laughs> First of all, fuck you. And why is that a problem that my door is off my hinges? I took the door to the. It's just you know that's a that's a that's a that's a what's it called? That's a uh, it's a hood description. I took the door off the hinges. What's that like? Exactly, exactly. (laughs) You'll never go to the suburbs and see doors off the hinges. Just so you know, I'm just saying. If the door's in the way, (laughs) take it off the hinges. Like no, yeah, we don't need this. We don't need this. Take the door off, you know, put like, put in, put up a shower curtain. We good. It's just like, do you need it or do you not? It's like the headboard. Do you need it? You break the sandwich. Fuck it. Do you stop? No. Right. First of all, you don't even need, you don't even need a door. You don't even need a bed frame. You need the mattress on the floor. That's all you need. Okay. <laughs> you need some sheets on the five. Yeah. And the, you know, you put the mattress on the floor. You got more room to practice backflips. That's all. <laughs> oh, man. I was going to say, give me some uh, sheets you- to the sewing machine. Bro, you about to have the uh, you about to have those little fucking beads hanging down your door like that uh, like oh. Jamaican stores and shit. I was gonna say the soup station shit, Miss Cleo and shit. Mm-hmm. You're, gonna no, walk no. In, you're gonna walk in. You're gonna have some tarot cards. Oh, you you this mm. close? I'm telling you, you're this close nah. to having tarot cards and healing crystals, bro. No, I'm this close to a lot of things. First of all, like hood country, but t- now mm-hmm. with tarot cards and fucking what else? Yeah, fucking education speech. Yeah, you're looking <laughs> you like. Know? It's not. It's not. Not three six mafia. Slum. Not. No. Not slum village. Who's them country ass rappers? De La Soul. Oh. De La Soul was a country. They was from New York. Yeah. No, it's a country he, ass rapper. You talking a crime mob? A film mob? Maybe. No. Maybe feel. Maybe feel mob. They used to do doing. They did a music video where they had like overalls on with Tim's and straw hats. 
Yeah, I think it had that. There's walking the pig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was uh, Phil, uh, Phil Mob. Yeah, <laughs> as you sick of being lonely. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Nah, I ain't that bad. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, yes, you are. I mean, you might be worse. Nah. Well, you you tuck your sweatshirt into your shorts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you... <laughs> That's a Chris original. <laughs> yes. My belly was just a little bigger that day. The shirt was a little thick, but it was not tucked into my words. And I ain't the only one that saw it. No, all, every, all y'all was. I was like, damn, Chris really embraced his old age, ain't he? <laughs> what the fuck y'all mean? Shit. Tell you, bro, I, I had never seen that. He had a hoodie tucked into his shorts with some Tims on. Sleeves cut off the hoodie. <laughs> I was in chill gear. Bro, but everything to... he's saying is right, except that the hoodie was not tucked in my shorts. Bro, I swear to God, if you, you're going to have like a little a bottle with just three X's on it, and that'd be <laughs> real country. That's all you're going to like. That's where all your alcohol is going to be. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> the triple X good shit. <laughs> Speaking of, what are you drinking? Oh, what am I drinking? Well, you know. What's it, what's it, you, what kind of bottle do you got? Well, you know, I got, I'm just bringing out that iron smoke. Oh, okay. Still working. You, I mean, you, the next time, hopefully, there's something left when you get when you get here. Okay. Yeah, you know, but no, I don't think so. I don't think it's going to be. They're going through that bottle quite nicely. Oh yeah, it was. This bottle's it's almost reaching a year old. What well, was batch ten was made on eleven twenty one twenty two. So yeah, it's getting. Oh shit. Okay, yeah, it is almost a year old. Yeah, yeah. I might have to go find another one. But after after that, mm-hmm. I am working with. You know, the little the white girl white claws. But these ones are called Surge. The ones that get the ones that get the white girls white girl wasted. Well, I mean, like 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 a friend like a friend of ours at, at the football game. <laughs> Almost became a meme. <laughs> oh man! Oh, shit! But this one is actually uh eight percent alcohol. Oh yeah, so you know, I think that's why they call it Surge because we you know. I had to run to the bathroom after. All right. Well, let's get ready for you to go to the bathroom in the next 20 minutes and watch your eyes get a little more smaller. First of all, mm-hmm. I do have to go to the bathroom. It's not because of that, because I've been drinking water all day. Okay, get it right. I'm hydrated. Okay. Right? Can't smell secondly, hydrated. You guys secondly, are good at math, not English. No. I'm not really that good at either. But <laughs> secondly, my they eyes. They just stutter on that one. <laughs> Yeah, because I was sitting there, I was about to say, you know, I'm real good, but I was like, no, nah, I had to be honest with myself. I ain't really the best at none of that shit. Oh, shit. You know, give me give me a pencil. Give me a pencil and drawing paper, mm-hmm. and I'll go to town. But you give me a calculator, and I might just, I could write hello upside down. That's about it. <laughs> Damn. I can see we out of your country no more. Just to get rid of this guy. <laughs> so, know, they're like, man, he dark. Don't not good at math. Just get him out of here. Man. Let them have you, him. You, you're definitely the definition of um your village called and said they want the idiot back. <laughs> oh, I'm a jungle uh, agent, man. That's what it is. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. That's my, my hoods on top of the trees. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> what you drinking? What am I drinking? You know, my usual. Yeah, yeah. What's Vegeta? What does Vegeta drink? Jesus juice. Oh, no. This is a sense to be in a liquid form. It's not first of all, Jesus' American name is not Jack. It's not Jesus Juice. Mm-hmm. No. Everybody just spells it differently, but it starts with a J. And ends with an S. <laughs> Jack, Jack, Jack Daniels, Jesus. Starts with a J, ends with an S. <laughs> I just made it up. I don't even know <laughs> that makes any <laughs> fucking sense. All right, so what else? Oh, uh, uh, and I'm just gonna sip on a little ying longer. Just chill. I can't even see that shit. I don't know why, but like, you should be just. Maybe this one? I don't know. You should just be shining on that shit. Probably because cool. your skin absorbs the rest of the light, so it just bounces off that shit. I need some more cocoa butter. Maybe it'll like reflect oh. off. Nah, you, I don't know. If you, have, bro, if you had cocoa butter on right now, that shit would look like. Oh, I'd be extra shiny. I don't know. It'll look like fucking uh, Bernie <laughs> Mac. They like, like so glow for the skin. Oh man! Dip your ass in chocolate and was like, "All right, go talk." <laughs> all right. Speaking of talking, this oh, movie man. had a lot of talking. It did. In matter of fact, did, could you? How was your sound quality in your theater? Good. Okay. 
Why? Maybe just with my ear because I, I I didn't feel like my sound quality was good. Well, I mean, because your theater is like you got like four screens and like you know the same guy no. that takes the tickets runs the concessions and <laughs> is the usher. No, I went to the big one this time. Thank you. On the good side of town, not the country side. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. the movie this week, you picked it. So I want you to let the people know what movie we watched. I did, ladies and gentlemen. The movie that we are reviewing this week, which came out, I want to say, I believe two weeks ago, was A Haunting in Venice. Yes, A Haunting in Venice. And I, you know, presumably assumed it was going to be like A Haunting in Connecticut or all these other A Haunting movies. Yeah. Turns out it was nothing like that at all. Yeah. Very little haunting. A whole lot of um investigating. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know if I, man, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to take a shot and just ask myself if I actually liked this movie. I, I was waiting for that one because I, I know how I feel about it. Hmm. I mean, since you picked it, why don't you let the people know how you feel about it? Um, it was a, it was a good watch. But not for the movie theater. Okay, I'll agree with that. I'll agree with that. And okay, but uh, why? This okay. That's the big question. Have to take a shot. And you tell me why, because I think I have a theory on why right. I feel the way I feel about it. Okay, well then let me get my shot together. Okay, come on, Kakashi's waiting, bro. No, young girl at the bottom. Yep. All right. Cheers, what, that, what does that say on the side of the the, the, the nip? A little the the writing. It says "Made for Chris Brown by Chris Brown for Chris Brown." <laughs> for you by you <laughs> yeah pretty much oh no okay it has um the nutritional effects on one side <laughs> i'm joking no yeah, it just has okay it has warnings on one side and then it has um where it says mellowed matured and tasted and awarded yeah, the nutritional oh, the side says hey the doctor said you can't fully get off these things just yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's personal information, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Cheers, brother. All right, it's indeed. All right. So, oh, that stuff burns, and I love it. Mm-hmm. Woo! All right. So, why were? Why do you feel like you aren't sure if you liked it? Because um. I do love a good detective movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think maybe I might have subliminally compared this one to the last one we watched, which was I think Knives Out or Glass Onion. I believe uh, well, the one we watched was Glass Onion, but yeah, same same type of movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like we talked about, Glass Onion was actually fun to watch. Yeah, like once it all came together. Yeah. This one, like you said, a haunting in Venice. Like I was expecting some ghost shit, like like Scooby Doo type shit. Who's yeah. doing this? If there is a ghost, what's going on? Um, and even though the story was still decent to me, I just don't think it was a movie theater worthy. So I, I'm going to agree with you in the sense that I subliminally uh, started comparing it to Glass Onion and Knives Out. I think it's because it's that that who done it, and not just because it's a who done it type movie, but because the lead characters all mm-hmm. had like over the top accents. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. I, so I think because of that, I in my head I was like, oh, it looks like they're trying to make their own version of, you know, Glass Onion or not, mm. or they're trying to make a a knockoff version. Maybe I mean they were they weren't because it was actually this is actually based off of an Agatha Christie book. Okay, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, at the end it says it's based off of Agatha Christie's uh, Halloween party. Mm, okay. So when I saw that, I was like, okay, then I see why it was set the way it was, but. I don't know, the characters were so over the top that it made me feel like I was watching characters perform a play versus mm. being like, you know, really into what they were what they were talking about. And shit like that. Okay. Um, because that was Tina Fey in the movie, Murray. Yeah. Okay. And of course she had the over the top American accent because she was a was a journalist or a book writer? Uh author. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And yeah. then she goes to get the guy from Venice, like the head detective. Mm-hmm. And he's over the top Italian. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And it, the thing is, it's, and it's the, the characters are so over the top that it makes you go, it makes you feel like you don't relate to them. 
Mm. I okay. feel like in like Glass Onion, mm-hmm. even though the characters were over the top, I felt like I could, you know, somewhat kind of relate to how they were. But in this one, I felt like I couldn't relate to anyone. So now I was just watching the story. Mm. Okay. You know? Yeah, because even even the boyfriend, he he was American, wasn't he? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. And then what's her name, Michelle Yo? Yeah. She she had I guess a good ten minutes of it in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean it it was I, I don't want to shit in the movie because it wasn't a bad movie. I just oh. I just would have stayed at home and watched it. Yeah. So do you think it was? Uh, it wasn't a bad movie at all. But do you think it was because it wasn't what you were expecting that made you go, ah? Because I was expecting a, like some scary shit. That's what I thought. Like a haunting, like, okay, this could be some Halloween's coming up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it might have some good thrillers, some good jump moments in it, and like that, yeah. everything like that. But I guess the overall story, in my opinion, was the detective trying to come to terms that maybe he did have a little help from a spirit source while still solving the case. I don't know. I think I think the story, I think the main story was uh the detective like becoming getting back to his old self again. Because essentially mm-hmm. he had retired from being a detective, whatever. And then it was the author pulling him back in to try to like, you know, get his juices going again. Yeah. So I felt like that was the actually the central story and not necessarily what was going on at the house. You know? Okay. And so, I don't know. I just think it was, I think I was so disappointed that it wasn't a haunting movie and more a, like, like, the like, Clue. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, I think it was like that. So, once I started, once I finally wrapped my head around that, I was mm-hmm. like, okay, let me pay attention to see the story to see if it, like, it actually keeps my attention. And parts of it did, for the most part, but, like, I will I will say this because even the way they wrote it and they tried to perform it on on the screen, mm-hmm. um, while I'm watching it, I'm actually noticing things like okay, there's a scene when they're in the I want to say the kitchen maybe, yeah, in the in the in the boyfriend cuts his stuff, and I remember seeing the jar of honey and I was like okay the honey's sitting there, which yeah. also when he went to the basement like a couple of scenes before a bunch of bees, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Now yeah. I didn't miss the whole wildflower thing or whatever. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the guy, just was, like, he was just, he, he just kind of mentioned it, like, you know, this is like something with the wildflowers and shit like that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But, um, so listening to the story, even as a viewer, I was trying to piece it together, because, of course, who doesn't want to try to put together a thriller? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Trying to guess who did what, what. Yeah. Oh, what's, what's the last movie you watched where, like, you were really caught up in, in the story about, like, who, you trying to figure out the story? Honestly, that's why I said I think I, I I went well I went into it to watch the movie for what it was, and then I started to compare it to Glass Onion. Yeah, just because, like 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 we said, Glass Onion was actually fun to watch. Yeah, you know, what I'm saying just like seeing how it happened, who did what, the characters in there, um, the roles they played, how the story all came together in the end. Yeah, you know, what I'm saying like that, that we couldn't even talk about it. We said this movie is actually more fun to watch than this to talk about because yeah. we'll get we're going to give away too much. Yeah. We want you to be just as surprised as we were. Versus this one, I feel like just telling you the end. So just watch it on, on when it comes on CBS. Well, because the thing is, like, you would have hoped that because, again, you get the name Haunting in Venice. Mm-hmm. Like, you would have thought that you get a little more jump scares, a little mm-hmm. more, like, enough scary stuff to make the, the word haunting mean something. But mm-hmm. it didn't. It's it's literally yeah okay they're going to a fucking seance yeah to, like you know contact some shit but like it's, it starts with a kids party yeah yeah they're talking about all the kids, kids are trapped in the, the basement mm-hmm. and everything else and come to find out it's all the hoax because Michelle Yo's character is like there's so much what'd you say what'd you say there's so much blood in this house or so much anger in this house or some shit like that some shit like that but like yeah like you know you got those fucking those charlatans that like will fucking work together and mm-hmm. and pretend that some shit's on when the motherfucker when he pulled the motherfucker out the fucking chimney uh, the, yeah but see that's that those parts that was making it fun to me like they like yeah. showing he's actually that good of a detective you know yeah, what i'm saying yeah, yeah. okay but, so do, do you think he needed that fucking heavy italian accent because that's the same dude that directed the movie really yeah kenneth branagh he's done so he's the guy that directed uh the first thor movie okay he, uh He's he's done like a he's directed like a lot of Shakespeare stuff. 
But yeah. if you remember, you you remember any of the Harry Potter movies? Mm-hmm. So Harry Potter and the, and the Chamber of Secrets, the second one. Mm-hmm. He's Gilderoy Lockhart, the guy that's the fucking uh, the uh, defense against the dark arts teacher who like didn't really know how to defend against the dark arts. He was just a book writer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But that's the same dude. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. And I and I think he was the bad guy in Wild Wild West. But okay. Yeah. I don't that completely. You should know Wild Wild West. You got a cowboy hat. Matter of fact, I, I got a cowboy hat. Now. I know. I know. I know the Wild Wild South. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> you know the Wild Wild Whites. That's what you know. <laughs> don't make me talk about what's going on in your life. <laughs> Look. Oh man, I know how to respond to that. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, people. Every time we're supposed to record, some shit happens, and it's catastrophic on Chris's end, and it's never the same thing until until today because we were actually supposed to record earlier, mm-hmm. but we couldn't record right then because his power went out again. Don't, don't quote unquote me. The power goes out out here. Hey man, listen. What you got? Fucking is Optimus it. Prime taking all your juices? Like, what the fuck is going on? I don't. I wish he was. At least I know there's a real purpose. Bro, you know, listen. If you live out in the country like that, everybody knows. If you live in the country, you need a fucking generator. No, you don't. Yes, you do. Go get a fucking. Uh, it's 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 a it's like a zero ground zero or I forget what it's called, but it's a solar generator. It'd be perfect oh, for the house, bro. True. Yeah. No, all jokes aside, like I do, got to invest in generator. Yeah, yeah, I know, cause fucking like I said, he lives thirty minutes from every everything life. <laughs> this man lives in he thirty lives minutes in, from life. <laughs> yeah, you live in the Alabama version of the fucking what is it called? Um, what is it? It's uh purgatory. Yeah, that's where you live. Really? <clears throat> yeah, you live in purgatory, bro. I don't think so. Realistically and metaphorically, this place is peaceful. It's zen. You know what I'm saying? That shit, nah, it's, man, listen, it, listen, if I saw if I saw yeah. a clock floating in the sky near your house, I'd be like, you know what, that sounds about right. Because he got some <laughs> weird shit going on over there. If somebody hey. got abducted by aliens in, in your neighborhood, I'd be like, yeah, that's where that shit happens. <laughs> that's exactly where you live, bro. Oh, man. Don't hate on the quiet country life. No, but with that being said, I, I want to visit again. Because I want to go to that fucking zip line place again. Oh, that? I thought you were to shoot the guns. That too. Okay. Actually, I gotta go, I gotta go back to the gun range. I gotta go work on the pistol again. Try to work on it. You know the thing that's fucked up is I well, last time I went to the pistol range, I was practicing and I was like put the I, I put the target out 15 yards. Mm-hmm. And you know, and me thinking in my head, I'm like, that's 15. So I'm just aiming and it's like it's okay. My aim's okay, but I'm like, that's 45 feet away. Mm-hmm. Like, let me practice at five yards and then start working <laughs> back. That's what they do. Yeah. Make people think everybody want to try to like hit long range every single time. No. Nah. What's your what's your yeah. aim? What's your aim? What's your what's your best shooting? I know you shooting shooting like RC cola cans in your backyard. I just shoot the microwave. <laughs> but they ain't cooking my food fast enough. I shoot that son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying. Shoot, well, you, got, nah. you got a broken microwave out there that you just I do it. actually got a broken microwave in the backyard. <laughs> That's target practice. These motherfuckers ain't listening to me. I don't know what I gotta do. Just taking your shit out. On ain't, the no, it's ain't no frozen pizza for nobody. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. What's 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 your good what your aim? How's how's your yeah. aim? You've had more to, practice than I have. I'll put it to, no, I'm, I'm gonna give you a real general a general but direct answer. Okay. I was trained to hit a target at 300 meters. And I can and that's slow. Listen, all, three, three, all th- I'm hearing is look, all I'm hearing is you seeing fat girls from across the club. That's it. <laughs> no man, no man, my target every fucking time. Uh, Just saying. In in your life, every target's name is Bertha. <laughs> <laughs> so if it's five hundred meters, is that Big Bertha? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, and cool. you can compete with with less. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't even touching that subject. <laughs> oh God, no. 
No, but, I gotta yeah. get better at my I gotta get better at my shooting. Anyways, all right. But, so that's so, that's what a, that's what a rifle with no scope. Just say it. Oh, it's double, hit it. Hmm? Double barrel or a single? No, 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 not a second rifle. Um, okay. M4 M16. Yeah. No, no scope, just to be able to hit a target center mass at 300 meters. First of all, you, now, now you're talking fucking French to me. I don't, I don't know exactly what you just said. It just sound like some shit that people say before they kill someone. Okay. <laughs> center mass? When, 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 when else do you hear the word center mass? It's a military term. Just say hmm. I was fucking this uh, bitch and I pulled out and I hit her center mass. <laughs> now if you say that, then you got some psych- psycho psychology problems. <laughs> There's something clearly wrong with you. He sound like he in the army, but he also sound like a whore. So... <laughs> oh God! Oh, that shot's hit. Yeah. Sorry, I, gotta... uh, I, I told you. Watch, ladies and gentlemen, he's going to the bathroom like another ten minutes. I'm a whole dash. In, in, in I'm pee in my look, pants look, to prove look, a point. Look, 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 look at his eyes. Let's more cheekier. I will. Pro- I will pee in my pants to prove a point. <laughs> Okay, I ain't gonna blink the rest but, of the podcast. If Ryu runs over there, we start hearing some tinkling. We know what's going on. All you can hear, Ryu, don't lick that. It's bad for you. It's toxins. If you've been drinking water all day long, it ain't gonna be nothing bad about it. Well, who knows? But yeah, but the the toxins that are in it, he's probably drinking like fucking leftover vitamin D and shit. Look, look, see, I actually hope Ryu does. I can I can prove to the world that my dog's better than yours. No, you, no, no. The only difference is Ryu would actually die because he's got a healthy diet. Your dog's been eating trash and whatever else, you know, fucking, fucking earthworms and shit. No. So it'll survive on whatever. Nah, but it knows better than to go lick some pee. Yeah, right. You're, yeah, because your dog's he don't got time to juice. Don't got time to lick pee. because She's always looking for a fight. Okay. That's, she's always testing her. She like Ryu in Street Fighter. As long as she got a forty ounce and a blunt. If she if she can go fight, she do what she do. Oh, uh, you 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 know you you got like little little Mike Tyson right there, just off the leash, just <laughs> gut punches to everything. Just ready, ready to go. Mm-hmm. Every time, uh, every time man. she walk down the street, oh, you you want a problem? You want a problem? Yeah, yeah, she do be like jabs. that. <laughs> she be looking for. It. All oh right, so, man. So the the lead character, what was the dude's name? Do you remember what the dude's name was? I do not. Okay, but okay, so the, with the lead character, he's again, he's the over the top Italian uh detective, detective, yep. And then you got the author, then you got the fucking the, the guard, you got Miss Cleo, Miss Cleo, oh, Michelle. Michelle, yeah, yeah. And then you got the fucking the 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 socialite white lady who brought everybody there in the first place to try to contact her daughter. She was the nanny, right? No, no, okay, oh, no, okay, gotcha, the mother. Mother, and then they had her nanny, and then her son, the doctor, the doctor, which was, but well, that's her husband as well. That's what I thought. I was confused with that part. Yeah, it was. I think it was her husband, but like everybody talked to him like he never even lived. I don't know the way they talked to, to him made mm-hmm. it sound like he was just a guest. He didn't sound like. He but, lived, but say, did we miss something because that was his son, not hers? Am I right? I think it was both their kids. Hmm. But just the way they talked, the way they talked to each other, there was mm-hmm. definitely a a disconnect between the family members. You ever had that shit? You know when, like, you know when the son shit, calls the shit, mama shit, Rachel. Shit. I'm, I'm blue. what kind of disconnect do we got? Listen, yeah, you know because no, like, like, do, do I really want to even say what I'm gonna say? I know because <laughs> if your kid, if your if your daughter calls your grandmama mom and your and her mama Pam, you ghetto. That's exactly what it is. Oh man. But yeah, it was it was one of those situations where it was like it felt like it felt like the kid, the dad, and the mom weren't related at all. Yeah, I agree. You know, what brings a relationship to that point? Money. Sometimes, right? Maybe. I feel like tragedy does. Okay, that too. You ever seen? Because I've seen, and maybe this is just a movie thing, but I've seen like you know you could have the most loving couple, mm-hmm. and then. Tragedy strikes, a daughter dies, maybe gets kidnapped, murdered, whatever. Mm-hmm. Drives a wedge in between the couple to where all of a sudden they feel like strangers to each other. Yeah, because one parent never really, I guess, can heal from it, I guess. So, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of feel like, I feel like, yeah, one parent never really heals from it. I feel like the other parent 
feel like the other parent isn't doing enough. I don't know. But I've seen that happen a bunch of times where, you know, there's something, something will happen personally mm-hmm. to a, a couple that completely drives them apart. And, you know, it makes two people who once would do anything for each other feel like total strangers. Yeah. I mean, that's sad. It's, a, it's just sad in general because like everybody processes tragedy and heartache differently. Indeed. And I think sometimes uh, we as people expect everyone else to process things the same way we do. I could agree that too. Yeah. So when you see them not doing that, you almost feel upset or angry Mm -hmm. by it. You know, you ever had that situation where someone, where you and someone else could go through a similar situation or the same exact situation together but because they process it differently, you're almost angry at that person. Yes, I'm guilty of it. Matter of fact, one of my favorite quotes, whenever something tragic happens or something that, um, yeah, that, that will alter your life. Yeah. I always say you got 24 hours to get out of the system and then get back to business. And for years, for years I have been saying that to, to people, like you got 24 hours, you know what I'm saying? Whatever just yeah. happened at this moment, Mm-hmm. For this one by tomorrow, be back to your be back to your square. Yeah, but if you, but from this moment to the next twenty four hours, go do whatever the fuck it is you think you need to do to heal yourself, cleanse yourself, whatever, and then get back to business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Until I said it to this one person one day, and they said, "All you can give me is twenty four hours," and it hit me differently. Woo! Holy shit! They didn't. They just called you out on your bullshit. Look, but but, I, but, but 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 to it, me it, it wasn't bullshit. To, to you, it's not bullshit. Yeah, to them, it's that's your bullshit. That's you putting yourself on me. See, and I didn't look at it that way. Yeah, it's said you got twenty four hours. I'm, whatever you want to do, get that shit done. We're gonna be good, whatever, and then get back to business because that's what I normally do. Yeah, take yeah. twenty four hours and back to business. But when this person said, "All you can give me is twenty four hours," I was like, "What the hell?" Like truth talk, we're trying to give you twenty four minutes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, shit, yeah. how did <laughs> that make you feel? Because I, I'm, I'm like you. I'm mm-hmm. in my. If, for me, it's yeah. You got twenty four hours. Heal however you need to heal. Mm-hmm. But the world, the world still the world keeps keep spinning. So keep on so going we, with it. Yeah. So we need to keep running with it. Yeah. How did that make it, you? Feel? It, it almost made me feel like I was a selfish piece of shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like even though my my my, I wasn't saying it in that way. For them to say that back to me. Was like they need more than 24 hours for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm telling them you're only getting 24 hours from me. Yeah. Even though that's not what I was saying, but it was just a different way to look at it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's almost like it's almost like indirectly you told them, hey, if you can't, if you can't keep up, then you're gonna get left by the wayside. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. When you think about it, like, man, that's actually that's that's the wrong way to fucking approach it like some people <laughs> like you you can't tell somebody how long it's going to take to 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 cope yeah and to try to put your 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 you know parameters your, on yeah how long you have to grieve mm-hmm. fucked up yeah because fucked it, up chris you look, fucked man. up hey, i do fucked up shit sometimes this is what it is i know you do but i, I try to be better you know what i'm yeah. saying yeah you eat but, all the chicken don't leave nothing no yeah, I, I save some pieces. No, you just, you save the wingettes, the, the, just the end piece that people use to make broth. That's <laughs> like, a, as long as it's hot sauce to go with it, you're good to go. Uh, and saying people like you like eating that shit, just saying dude, the wingettes are delicious, bro. It's just skin and bone. Ain't but nothing there. Part. All this is seasoning and skin. That's the best part, bro. You, you know what's funny about it is when I take those and throw them out the window to the birds and they eat them. I'm just like, y'all don't even know what y'all eating. No, no, they, they, no, no. They like you don't know what you're throwing out. They're like, this is the delicious shit. The other day, actually, I went to so I went to Publix the other day to go mm-hmm. get some wings so I could make them to watch a Patriots game, mm-hmm. and all they had was the drumettes. They had no flats for some reason. Really? Yeah. And it was like it was weird. Like how did how do you have a bunch of drumettes but no flats? Like the fact that people have a preference. Oh, I only eat the the wingettes. I don't eat the drums. Like you, rich ass fucking. Nah, but let's let's make that a subject real quick because I've always wondered this, even with myself. All right, you, you got like you said, you got the drumettes and you got the flat. Mm-hmm. There's some people like all flats. People like 
the drumettes. Yeah. Me, I'm going to eat it all because I'm fucking fat. But I love the flats. The flats are what I want the most. What, what, do, you, what do you think that means? It means you like them flat. In more ways than one. They, they dip in the sauce better. <laughs> uh, you just like you just like be able to get your hand around. Uh, just in one shot, just peel it off. You can do that with a drumette too. Hell no, nah, you can't, dude. You can't stick a drumette in your mouth, give a good suck, and then get all the meat off. Don't ever, don't ever. You might want to edit that part out. No, 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 no. We keeping that in because it's no. the truth. You can't do that. You, you can't do that with the drumette. You can't give a good suck. <laughs> you, you can't do that with it. You can't listen. I know I got a friend. I got a friend that you also know who oh stick a whole flat in their mouth and just swirl that shit around like a fucking strawberry stem and pull the bones out. Like you I can't agree. do that with a drum at. Uh, I don't know how you do it with a flat, but still. Yeah, I don't know, but you I don't you got a good tongue game. That's all. I mean, a good tongue game with no woman. You're just practicing. Just licking tons I mean, of stamps. I mean, tons and tons of stamps. How many, how many years you've been practicing? Hey man, you got how big your stamp collection? You can't uh, let's see. It. Here we go. This is what a this is what a podcast takes that turn. <laughs> oh God. No, like you can't you can't. There's no feasible way in this world that you can take all the meat off a drum at in one shot. It's just not. There's, see, it's see, I had to, I had to come back to that, but I don't want to say it no more because go for it. Just, go for no, it. It's gonna be weird as shit. No, 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 no. You, I guess you got your methods. Own up to them. I like to eat shit. I know you do. You gonna be at a truck stop taking all the meat off of a drum mat and you be like, I should hey, hold the body. Hey, on the hey, you know what? I'm about to, if you ever stop at a pilot or a flying J and they got them hot wings and a little regular. Wings sitting there, and you got to get back on the road to keep driving. Mm-hmm. Look, grab it, let the submits go out the window. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I bet you, but you can't do that with a drum. You can do it with a flat. And a, you can't do it with a drum. Hit. No, you can't. No, you can't. I swear uh, look, to God, look, you can't do that with a drum. Hit. No homo. I've done it before. <laughs> nah, nah. Come to find out, Chris got good, go- got like um, impeccable jaws. <laughs> Oh gosh, I'm just trying to eat and keep moving. Shit, uh, and dipped in the barbecue sauce. Just saying, I don't even like barbecue sauce on my wings, bro. Yeah, you like blue cheese? Nah, dry rub or like or something spicy. But my barbecue dry sauce rub. for the ribs. You, you want a dry rub? Mm-hmm. No lubrication at all. None, 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 none. I don't like it wet. Just dried. All calluses and everything. Yeah. Oh, terrible. <laughs> All right. So, what when you realized this was a whodunit detective movie and mm-hmm. not a haunting movie, like how did you react? Because I it, it, it kind of upset me when I finally realized it. Mm-hmm. I was kind of upset because I was expecting to see this like scary, like you know, jump scare kind of ghost movie. Yeah. No, I was definitely um upset with it because, like you said, the title sets are haunting in Venice. So it's like I really felt like it was going to be not anything about a murder, but something happened, and it was all about was it spirits or people or whatever. Yeah, and that's why I said that said the story was great, but it wasn't the haunting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it because it, it, I thought it'd be like investigating ghosts. Yeah. Not- why the ghosts are there, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Right? Especially if you're going to use the name of Haunting in Venice, that's that's copying the name of Haunting in Connecticut. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And when that movie came out, what was it? 15, 18 years ago, maybe? Dude, that's, that's, that's in, that was in Southington, Connecticut. Yeah, I, I know. I used to drive over there when I used to work in Connecticut at the sneaker store. But, but what I'm saying is, like, I don't remember the movie com- completely, but that was about a real haunting. Like yeah. seances and shit going on, and they come to find out wasn't like a bunch of bodies hitting the walls or some shit like that. Yeah, because so they moved into a house that used to be a morgue. Oh, no, okay, like, yeah, yeah, morgue, yeah, and they had like bodies like stuffed into the walls. Mm-hmm. 
and you know shit like that. And so it was it was an actual haunting. This shit yeah. was a detective case, and the dude was having fucking it's like having a midlife crisis. Like, oh, I don't know if I want to be a detective anymore. And the only reason I'm here is because you trying to discredit me and trying to like you know say that all the shit I did before wasn't any good. Hell yeah. What's your favorite ghost movie? My favorite ghost movie? Yeah, movie a movie where the central character or the central subject is dealing with ghosts. I was gonna say this. the the ghost Patrick Swayze would be Man, get out of here. you 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 would that would that be was, your favorite. That was a good ass movie though. Yeah, if <laughs> you three four shades lighter. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, I just okay. It's good. But like, oh, but... to me, that's not a ghost story. That's a spiritual love story. It's different. A ghost yeah, story. That. Shit that, like, Ghostbusters is more of a ghost story than fucking ghost. Okay, you know what? Okay, you know what? Uh, I can't even use that one because it's not really about ghosts. What is it? But I was going to say What Lies Beneath. Which one is that one? I, I know I know the name, but I just don't mm-hmm. know what it was about. I believe Harrison Ford was in it and Michelle Pfeiffer. And, um... I think he's a college professor in the movie having an affair with a college student. He ends up killing her like um, in the river or whatever. Mm-hmm. But she's like coming back through Michelle Pfeiffer's character. Oh, this shit sounds dope. I ain't never seen this. You never seen What Lies Beneath? No, I know. I, I've, I've, so I've always seen the name, the title, whatever, but I've never actually mm-hmm. watched it. No, that was a good thriller slash ghost story. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but of course, that, that was also what 2000 and what five four maybe but i feel like back then that i don't know it might be even late 90s i could be wrong i might be biased but i feel like the late 90s early 2000 ghost movies were better than the ones now definitely because a lot of movies now they either got too much sex you know what i'm saying what too much sex it's only they're trying to like broadcast more about titties and ass than the story okay you know what i'm saying yeah i'll agree to that um I feel like I feel like nowadays the movies try to be too clever. Like you they're like, there's a story here, mm-hmm. and here's a way to tell it that can make it scary, but now they just try to be too clever and almost try to make it like you're in on the story. If that makes mm-hmm. sense. Okay, I can see that. Like like it's <clears throat> it's it's like it's scary, but don't take it seriously because it's just a movie. Where back then it was like, now nah, we're just gonna tell this story. Mm-hmm. You're gonna take it for what it is. Like you ever seen the others? I, no, I haven't. With Nicole Kidman, and so it's like Nicole Kidman and her kids. They live in this house, whatever, and mm-hmm. like she always makes them like because they, I guess they are affected by some kind of uh, disease where they can't have light touch their skin. So they're always closing like the blinds and shit like that. And they can only go out at night and shit like that. And mm-hmm. they live in this house with their helpers. And then spoiler turns out they're actually ghosts. Oh, okay. I never seen the movie, but I remember it being talked about by somebody. Yeah. You watch the whole movie. And you're like, Oh man, this shit's fucking crazy. And you mm-hmm. think there's ghosts in the house. Then you realize, no, they're actually the ghosts and mm-hmm. there's your real family living in the house and all the shit they're doing that family is like, yo, this place, fucking place is haunted and shit. Mm-hmm. Mm. To me, that's 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 a good ghost movie. Fucking Six Sense. That's a fucking awesome ghost movie. Yeah, I think nowadays that- they just try they try to be so fucking clever and so try to be they try to be so in on the 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 the, the, the joke that it kind of takes you out and you know, you never really get fully invested in it. Mm. Mm. Hmm. I, I can't remember the last time I watched the movie where I was like, God damn, like whatever happened, like blew my mind. I was actually thinking about that when you was talking, but it wasn't a ghost story. It was just a movie that we watched. Um, nothing to hide. Yeah, yeah. And you know, and it wasn't a ghost story, but once everything came out and you see what the fuck was going on, yeah. You're like you you and I both was like, yo, they, did you see that coming? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Fully <laughs> invested. Fully invested. Yeah. You're you're watching these relatable characters. Mm. Go through some shit and you're living it with them. Mm. You know? And then you know, because you know, like, okay, so I use this as an example a lot. You ever seen the other guys, Will Farrell and Mark Wahlberg? Mm-hmm. The minute they're talking about, yeah. Okay, so there's a scene in the movie where they go to the fucking lottery office, whatever, in New Jersey. And as they go there, the, the shit blows up and they get blown. Mm-hmm. 
and they're sitting there like you know dealing with the fucking the the the, the explosion and like they can't hear and shit. Mm-hmm. And then Will Ferrell goes, "Oh my god, it hurts so bad." They really don't do that. They, they really oversell this in movies. This isn't exactly how it happens in movies and shit like that. And to me, it's so like in on the joke that it mm-hmm. pulls me out of the movie. It mm-hmm. makes me not, it makes me go, okay, they're just acting. This is just a movie and it's the story doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. And that's what I feel like a lot of movies nowadays do. They don't gotcha. they kinda, like, they take that moment to remind you that. This isn't real. It's just a story where back in the 90s, 80s, all that, they're like, let's just tell the story how it goes. And it was believable. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But even if it wasn't real, it's just like it made you feel something when you left. Yeah. Or while you were sitting there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <clears throat> and that's the thing with, with this movie. I could because the characters were so over the top and everything. I felt myself pulled out of the story because I couldn't relate to any of the characters at all. Mm. So then I had to watch the movie for the storyline to see if the storyline was engaging and parts of it were Mm -hmm. parts were kind of just. Yeah. Like, what was it? Like the, the the housekeeper. What was her part in it? She was always around. I don't know. It was just, and it was, there was color in the movie, but it wasn't majority of it like a, like a black and white setting. I mean, I don't know if it was a black and white setting, but they did pull a lot of the color out so that it was like, because it was old school. It was like, Set in like the early 1900s, uh, late 1800s, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Again, something like that. When you when when you make it a period piece, it already makes you go, okay, like you can't relate to the characters. Mm. What what what's what's yeah. the last period movie where you could actually relate to the characters? Period movie <clears throat> to make sure what you're talking about. What do you mean by period movie? By period movie, I mean like a movie that takes place in a time that's not modern times. Like if you watch a slavery mm. movie, it's a period movie because it takes it takes place in like slavery. yeah. Listen, I, I just I just threw it out there. <laughs> ain't got ain't got nothing. Just because Chris Brown is brown, ain't got nothing to do with it. Oh God, uh, I could have said King Arthur, but yeah, um, I'm just saying like you know it takes place in a time that's not current. Yeah, then you know, and if and it feels relatable. Yeah, when's the last movie that you saw something that where it didn't take place in the current modern times, but it felt relatable? This isn't the last movie I've seen, but it's like my most favorite one. What? 300? But how the hell did that make you feel relatable? You ain't, like, you, you ain't never walked around on a loincloth in your life. Well, actually, you know, no, maybe, maybe you, you did. You, maybe you did. I don't, you don't know. know what I do with personal time. I know, I know. But you juice by yourself in the house, slanging it around, just... Leonidas outside with a spear with my dog in a red cape. Wait for all whatever deer want to come to the backyard. This is Sparta. <laughs> Let it go. But not um I know it's not the last movie I've seen, but it's it's one of my favorite movies. Yeah. But it's more about um just that whole warrior spirit, you know what I'm saying? Okay. It was like not not this time where people don't fight with swords and shields no more, yeah. but just knowing like we got to go slug this out to win. You know what I'm saying? So so it was the messaging of the characters, like yeah, it's not necessarily the time period that it's in, but that whole I know we're down. I know we got it's a hundred versus a thousand. Mm-hmm. We're gonna go do this shit. Mm-hmm. And you mentality. just get up there and you just and you fight. You know that like that that. Not even because of the warrior spirit of the movie, but just like this is one of my favorite movies. I thought it's one of my top three. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like people don't give it much credit from like different phrases in the movie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like one of my favorite quotes from the movie is when they're dying, and one of his right hand man is like, It's an honor to die beside you. Yeah. And he said, No, it was an honor to live beside you. You know what I'm saying? That's some cool shit to say. It's like, look, like we're dying right now, but I remember our life. Fuck the de- fuck death right now. So did did you feel like that when you were in the army? I mean, I, you can say that because every day is not guaranteed. Well, shit, every day in life ain't guaranteed to you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But when you're in a place where death is like on the front at door you, every day, yeah, yeah, it's at your doorstep <laughs> every day. Yeah. yeah, on the front on shit on the doorstep every day. It's like you just kind of you adapt your mind to knowing this is this this day could be it. Yeah, and you just you can't run from it. I mean, you could cowards run, 
You know what I'm saying? But you just say, nah, fuck it. This is what I signed up for. Give me my sword, give me my shield, give me my cape, give me my fucking loincloth. Let's go here and do this shit. You know what I'm saying? He <laughs> called the goddamn day because I signed up for this. Yeah. And whoever it's going to go, it's be that. You, yeah. you ever find it funny that, like, whenever they depict like ancient warriors, they got less clothes but more muscles? Yeah. But nowadays, when you it's modern, it's like <laughs> the skinny people, they in like fucking giant, like, uh, armored bodies and shit like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Maybe they just thought people back then were tougher than they are now. I actually believe that. Yeah, I do. I can see that. Well, I mean, but is it is it their is it our fault? Like they back then they had to be tougher. They had to work in the field. You know, you had to push the oxen. Listen, let me go. You had to push the oxen. You had to grow the plants. You had to do all that shit by hand. Where nowadays you got robots and you know all this machinery that can help you. Like we know what technology can do for us, so yeah, it's not as uh, it's not as important for us to be able to lift something by ourselves as long as we know how to build a machine to do it. See, and I feel like that takes away from like we live in such a lazy era. Yeah, I'll like, agree to that. A, a, a friend of mine went to go get um some coffee the other day, and she's in the store ordering it. And was still waiting 10 to 15 minutes when she got lazy ass up, went to the place, ordered the coffee, and had to wait because the two of you making mobile and drive the orders. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. That's some late. Like we've gotten so lazy where we're like, let's take care of the people at home first. Well, versus so the you, one that actually should do the damn job. So here's the thing. I think to, I, I hate mobile orders. I'll be honest with you. Okay. Because it's to me, that's the example of I want it. And I want it ready when I want it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how egotistical are you that you want everything within your grasp at any time of the day? Like, I I got a friend, you know him, but this motherfucker will be on a plane or about to take off and he will schedule his protein shake pickup for when he lands. Okay. And I'm just like, bruh. Just go to the goddamn restaurant, the place when you land and order the fucking protein shake. The fact, yeah. that, the fact that it's sitting there when you land and you get there and then you're upset because it's been sitting there for 20 minutes. Like, mm. just go there and order it when you get when you land. Like I said, we we, we become so lazy. We be, yeah. we become so lazy. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? As shit, I can't say American. Just I think it's society. You know what I'm saying? Think, yeah, I think us. I think us as a society in general. But like, okay, so the crux of this movie is they're trying to figure out uh, the, the girl died because apparently, what was up with her? She was like, no, she like I, crazy. What was what was wrong with the girl that she? If, was if I remember the story correctly, the mom didn't walk her with the boyfriend, so yeah. she kept poisoning her. No, no, but like before you, we before we find out that she was poisoning her. Mm-hmm. We just are assumed that like she's sick or oh, whatever. Because they thought the they thought the the whole haunting of the children that died in there all the years before was affecting the daughter. Yeah. 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 And then mm-hmm. they thought she they thought she was like that's it. They thought the ghosts pushed her out the fucking window. Mm-hmm. And then that killed her and shit like that. Yeah. Uh, what was it with the bird? What's up? What was it with the bird? The little was it? Oh, yeah, that was yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the bird that was because I guess that was the bird that like the girl talked to all the time. Okay, so it was always but around. I, but see, I thought the bird would be more of a um. I, I thought the bird would have more of a clue. Secrets. Yeah, yeah, more I thought of it would a have clue. more secrets than it. Yeah, you know, because like all of a sudden, you maybe the bird overhear some shit. Hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, there's, there's there's a lot of stories they're trying to weave in through here, and. I'm not going to say it wasn't successful, but it was a little far-fetched. Like, the whole idea about why they brought the detective there in the first place mm-hmm. was because the author had a, another book. Yeah, because she had, like, three books that didn't really sell that great. Mm-hmm. She needed a new book that, like, was going to, like, be explosive. And yeah. then, you know, she fucking was in cahoots with the security guard. And, and the cop. And, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. But I see. But when it, but there were certain parts of the movie that made that made me want to lean forward. But like, oh, okay, it's about to get good. 
it did so happen like okay where are we going with this right now you know what i'm saying so okay so so what's the spot that made you lean in like okay this is about to get good like okay for instance when he's breaking down his um his um his security the cop he said you were a cop you've been here before yeah what's your backstory you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so that now me going back to the movie because his bodyguard was, was pretty badass you know what i'm saying yeah like whatever needed to get done got done. Like when Homer tried to escape, he said, "I don't know how far you get with a broken leg." Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Like so, I liked his character. So when he just to break his character down about okay, you're ex cop, you quit, you've been here before. I'm like holy shit, it's about to go somewhere. You know dude, what I'm saying, dude? When he said, you know, you you became my security, no one passed through, but all of a sudden, the author with the app will pass through. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, she's the, like all of a sudden she's the only one that can get through to you. Mm. Like you happen to you happen to be the detective who was on duty when that shit happened, the, but, and that's what I'm saying. Like that, it was like that part was like, oh shit, okay, we get somewhere, and then it was, you know. But do you do you not do you not feel like that's kind of far fetched? Like it, th- this man had to have this man had to have no. Keep going. I just job. remember something too in the movie. But keep going. He had to have quit his job and then became security for this guy, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden randomly thought, okay, we're gonna. We're gonna fucking uh put together this scheme because I want this detective to solve this case. It was just yeah. it was just too convenient. I I get it, it's cool, and the whole weaving everybody's story into each other is cool because it's mm. like when it gets revealed, it's like oh it's kind of like an oh shit moment. But it's kind of like, why? Why mm. would this person go through all that to to get all this to happen? Yeah. I get the author, you know, she her her income is based off of whether her books sell and her books haven't been selling. So she has a reason to try to get this dude back into it. But like, it just felt like they were roping in all these people who, uh, I guess, I guess the, 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 what's the word? The uh, motive motive for each person wasn't that strong. Mm, Okay. I can see that. You said you had a, you said it jogged something in your brain called Chris Brown. Oh yeah. 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 Remember when he's um in the bathroom? Oh no, no, in the hallway talking to the little girl. He's just messing in the house. Yeah, M- maybe I don't remember, but where did she go? So she was the ghost, because he sees her picture. That's oh. that was that was the daughter, but that was a younger version of the daughter before she died. Got okay, okay. He's okay. talking to her, and they're like, "Oh, who are you talking to?" And they look over, and it's not her. And okay, no one there. Yeah. Okay, so, so at the okay, end so of the I day, there was a haunting going on. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't nearly as central as the the title would make you think. Mm. You know? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they put my emotions on this one. Yeah. I thought it was gonna be good. I mean now, okay. I thought it was gonna be better than what it was. Cause I don't want to say it was bad because it wasn't bad. I just thought it was gonna be I just thought of, I thought I was gonna be scared. I was like, oh shit, look at this bitch. Oh, <laughs> they killing each other while they fucking oh shit. Like that's what I thought was gonna happen. Like like tie me up, tie me down. <laughs> <laughs> no, because no, no, no. no, that shit had a gladiator with a cape for no reason. <laughs> oh man. Oh shit. But no, I just I, I get like I I understand the story and it's based off of a book, so it can only do so much. Mm-hmm. But Glass Onion is a much better version oh, of yes. kind of movie. Yes. So I don't know. Do you ever see though? T- like to me, when I when I was watching it, it just re- you know how like sometimes you'll see like oh Jurassic Park comes out in the theaters, so mm-hmm. then, you know Sci Fi Network got like Jurassic Backyard, mm-hmm. and this is what this kind of reminded me of. It was like a Sci Fi version of a, a movie in the theaters. Mm. Not that it wasn't, but I'm just saying that's when I that's the feeling I got when I started watching it. Yeah, then it starts off with him. With a lot of at his door, people trying to get him to fucking be an investigator again or whatever. Yeah, he's retired or he quit or whatever. I don't like it, it. It felt like they were trying to set up a whole series with this detective. Yeah, you know, and it's like you can't. To me, you can't do that. Just worry about the worry about the first movie. Make sure the first movie is good, and if it's good, then keep going. But don't yeah. go into a movie thinking, "All right, we're gonna turn this into a whole series of movies." I agree. We're just doing this. 
What's, the, what's your favorite series of movies? Just out of curiosity. My favorite series? Series. Like a series where you're like, oh, I got to follow this. N- nah. I can't. Mm, I can't. Sure. No, I can't use one of those. Bad girls, one, two, and three. Sorority chicks. Chicks with. <laughs> I was going to say original coconut juice. One, two, and X. <laughs> Coconut juice XL. Uh, you know what? As a movie, that could tell you a series, but as a movie, okay, I okay. mean, maybe, maybe Blade. Okay, okay so, so a movie, as in like when you watch the first movie, it doesn't feel like it's going to be a series of book or movies, but mm-hmm. it turns into it. Like when I, okay, so it's, for instance, when I watch Harry Potter, mm-hmm. it feels like it's the first part of a series. See, and Harry Potter didn't hit me like that. I mean, to, no, to no, no, day, I get, no, I get it, but like when, but when you watch Harry Potter, like you okay. don't. Get, when I watch Harry Potter, I don't see it as oh, this is just one movie and that's it. Mm-hmm. I, I I see it. I'm like, okay, there's clearly like more more pieces that are gonna keep coming. Yeah. Okay, so I'll give you one because I didn't understand the, the hype with Twilight mm-hmm. until I sat there and watched like the first two on HBO one night, sitting and drunk as hell. Like, why did everybody watch this damn shit? You know what I'm saying? And I'm like way behind. This is like when the like the last movie's about to come out in like another month or two. And it's going yeah. crazy. So they're showing all the movies on TV. Yeah. So I'm sitting there not shit to watch. And I'm saying, fuck it, it's on. But as I'm watching it, I actually want to see what's going to happen next. I want to oh, see what's going to happen like, next. Because you like you know, sparkly ass vampires. No, I like right, you flashy ass motherfucker. No, I like the redhead. She was the villain in um, I think the one the one before the last one. Well, I mean, the second and last one, she was, it was, it was the same girl for one and two. And then part three, it was Bryce Dallas Howard took over. Hey, this goes really, really bad, but she was like the queen bitch in the help. <laughs> yeah. Bryce Dallas Howard. That's her. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's fucking the, uh, what's his name? Fucking, uh, you know, uh, you know who Ron Howard is? You ever watch Andy Griffith's show? Okay, a uh, long time ago, but yeah. He, he was a kid on the Andy Griffith show, and then he was, I forget his name, but he was in uh, Happy Days. It was like the Fonz. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah that's, that's, a, that's Ron Howard's daughter. She was in like fucking Jurassic World. And, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I still yeah, can't say I'm a fan. So I, can't get, I still can't say I'm a fan of Twilight, because yeah. I'm not. But I no, I'm not I, a liar. If there was a black sh- vampire, yeah, if there was one black. There was vampire, a black you, vampire. He yeah, had you just upset. He got he got killed, so that's why you checked out. But if he didn't, you'd have been like, he yeah, got checked out. No, that, you'd have been dressed checked- up just like me. No, fuck no, no. That, Hell yeah. See, no, Hell yeah. You'd have no. had a dreads. No, no, no. Hell no. <laughs> checked out the last movie. Trying to wasn't he the one that chased? No, the one that chased down fucking Jacob was a dude from um. Was it the protector? It unbox. There's a fight scene where they're fighting in the water. He's doing. He's he's got the um Eddie Gordo fighting style. Okay, you know I, what I'm talking I, about. I, I know who you're talking about, but you're saying he was in Twilight. He's the one that he's the one that was chasing down Jacob when he when Jacob was taken off with um Bella's daughter. And now I have to rewatch it. Cause I like that. Cause that's first. Okay, so first of all, that's Latif Crowder. Okay, he's he, when he fights an Ungbok or is it the protector? He has a prayer on his chest, right? Yeah, he has a prayer on his chest. Yeah, he's got the fucking brick. The, so the, he's he's the stunt double for the Mandalorian. He's like the main stunt double for Mando. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you're but, telling me he was okay? So he's in he's in, he's in he's in Twilight because I feel like they. Because when I saw him in the protector, you and I both know that fight scene with the on the floor and the fire. Mm-hmm. Like that fight scene is dope as fuck. Yeah, like yeah, that's Tony Jaa does a Tony ja does a kick in that movie that I've never seen done by any other martial arts in my life on yeah. TV. A double kick on what off one foot, he kicks, lands on the same foot and kick again, and it lands. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like yo, yeah, that shit is dope. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah. God, God damn, now I gotta go watch fucking. Twilight Four, because <laughs> Latif Crowder might be in it. But see, but the reason why Twilight pissed off is because that final fight scene was the way it's supposed to end, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? But no, Tumbo, I just showed you what could happen, and you're still not happy. Like, what the fuck was on the death? Okay, I wanted so, to see the people okay, die. Because here's there, because I read all the books, 
And the reason why they did that is because they had to. Because if they did this, because the ending in the in the book is nothing happens. They meet up. Mm-hmm. Sorry, who, who if y'all ain't read Twilight, you're about 10 years too late. But yeah. they meet up, they're about to fight, then nothing actually happens. Hmm. If, if that actually happened in the, the, the movies, where you had four movies built up, and then motherfuckers get to the fucking starting line and just say, Nah, we ain't fighting. Yeah, we've been fucking upset. So they actually had to do that. Then be like, yeah, yeah, you know, I actually showed you what it was in your brain, but they were actually just standing there. It was horse shit. Yeah. Well, I'd still horse shit. <laughs> just saying. Yeah. yeah big Clydesdale <laughs> horse shit. Oh. Oh man. But, but yeah, yeah that, but yeah, that's one movie that I could say that I actually want to see what was gonna happen next once I started watching it. So for me, it was like the Jason Bourne movies. Okay. So when I saw The Born Identity, it just looked like a dope movie. But then when it turned into a series, I was like, oh, shit, I can't wait to see what happens with Jason Bourne next. Mm. So, like, I like that. Like, this book, this, to me, this movie felt like they're just setting up for more movies. Remember how it it Knives Out, it didn't, it Knives Out, it felt like it was just one movie. It did. And And then they did Glass Onion which happened to be about the same detective and shit like that, but but a whole different cast. Yeah, but it didn't feel it didn't feel like Knives Out was a was a setup for Glass Onion. Okay, I can see but that. This movie feels like it's a setup for a long series of, of, of movies. But see, I wouldn't even want to see the second one because the first one, unless they show a much better trailer. Yeah, you know. Well, first of all, the trailer had to been pretty good because you're the one that selected the movie. I did because that trailer was pretty good. But exactly. now after watching the movie, unless they show a much better trailer, then yeah. Well, I'm, I'm saying like, okay, so when they made the movie, it felt like their it felt like their purpose wasn't necessarily to make the best movie, mm-hmm. but it was to make a movie that they could then build off of and make more movies. And that's to me, that's the wrong way to go about it. You got to make mm-hmm. like Batman Begins. As much as it goes, Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, The Dark Knight Rises. Mm-hmm. After Batman Begins, like and that's a good movie on its own. You could end it right there, and it's you just could. one single Batman movie, and then they just build it up off it. But you don't make the Batman Begins and go, "Oh, this is just a setup for the next movie." Okay, so do you think Batman Begins set up? I don't think it was initially started as a setup. I think they just decided to do it, and then when it did so well, they were like, "All right, let's fucking see if we can build off it." But see, what's so fucked up about that is because Batman Begins to me was just okay. You know what I'm saying? No, all, it, fuck no, you. no, listen. No, no, I, no, it was. It was just okay. Batman Begins. Why? Was just, oh, oh. You got to tell the people why, because I, I, I finally have to take a piss. Oh, you you, you finally waited. I thought you were peeing yourself, God damn it. Well, well, maybe you don't know. You don't know. My my light blue jeans might be dark blue right but now. See, I can't, but see, I can't help it without getting your, your, your feedback, because it's going to be a debate. Okay, well, well then you know, I'll, just, I'll just cut it, and then we'll edit back. So you can do whatever you need to do right now. I'm going to go take a piss. When I get back, we'll just come back in. All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, I am the road dog, Jesse James. <laughs> this is... <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, we are Surat and Chris. It's our podcast about movies that we just go everywhere and talk about everything and say a bunch of dumb shit. But we appreciate y'all tuning in and just listening to us, uh, giving us your feedback. Um, if we bore you sometime, give us because at the end of the day, this is really too. This is really a conversation between two best friends. Like even though it's labeled as a podcast, we're really just sitting here just talking, and movies create the conversation for us. So, um, yeah, appreciate y'all going on this journey with us. And here, oh, he he went quick. Fucking Asia technique over there. I gotta learn that shit. Pee on us. Pee, just pee and be done with it. You know what I'm saying? You know, he's sitting on Mr. Miyagi. Commenting on my pee, motherfucker. <laughs> See, this shit was quick as hell. So I gotta learn that shit. I had to get it out. I fucking squeezed that motherfucker out. I felt like I was wringing out a towel. Just quack. <laughs> I know you can do that with pee. <laughs> yeah. Just squeeze. This is the other day. This is what I learned. All right. Okay. So if you're like me, you're a guy who sometimes 
just tries to get their pee over and done with quick so they can get back to what they're doing. But in doing so, you might have a little leftover. So when you get done, you zip up your pants or whatever, and all of a sudden a little bit leaks out. And then next thing you know, you got a little bit of a stain. So the other day I did that same shit, but I was like, yeah, no, I'm going to get this all out. And I squeezed, and I was there for like another two minutes getting more pee out. So get all your pee out. That's all I'm saying. I'm 40, man. I ain't got no shame. <laughs> Don't yeah. shake your head, man. Yes. Yeah. 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 You a grown man with a Dragon Ball Z fucking hat on. Don't fucking shake your head at me. You would say that you're a Patriots fan. Yeah, first of all, I am a Patriots fan, and I got a new Corgi. I see that that rainbow fucking connection there. Listen, that's not. That's a, it's like rainbow bright Corgi. Oh, uh, man. And don't hit the Dragon Ball Z hat. No, the Dragon Ball Z hat is dope. I'd actually steal it. But, you know, you mm. probably got like a seven and five eights hat that's too big. No. For me. It's a snap back home skillet. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Turn that around again. Turn it around. What, what'd you see? No, no, keep going. There you go. Is this, It's on the last fucking, it's on the last snap? No, the last two. Yeah. What the fuck, bro? Because I don't plan on wearing this. Hell no. Nah. If it needs to be on, look at that shit. That shit is stretched out for all good life, man. God damn. Oh God! It better be a child's hat that you're just stretching, like you're putting on the last year to try to make it fit. Hey, it was a gift. <laughs> it was a gift. I don't know. But if shit, that's an adult hat, and but you're look, wearing the last man. Listen, but no, no. But here's the funny part about it because you have the jeet in the front. Yep. And why is Goku on the side? Why is the sticker still on? So you got Goku know. and Krillin. Yeah, every, everybody's on here. Yeah, you know yeah Krillin, Yamcha. Uh, anything? Tien, there you go. Yeah, Gohan, Piccolo. All right. The Saiyans, Bardock. I got to go with my Louis Vuitton Vegeta hoodie. Man, listen, you first of all, you don't even, you don't even can't even pronounce Louis Vuitton. I just said it. Oh, Not no, can no, I spell no. it? I don't know. <laughs> I said it. <laughs> if you ever had anything Louis Vuitton, I would literally think you were it was a clone. I, I actually do, but I didn't buy the shit. <laughs> you, what do you got? It's it's a Wallet? Vegeta, it's a Vegeta hoodie that's Louis Vuitton. I don't know if it's really oh, not. I ain't gonna lie. No, if, I ain't, look, look, ain't look. no. First of all, that is, you know damn well that shit ain't real. You never that know. Is, that's from a no. Mex- That's from Miguel no. at the fucking swap meet. He made that shit on his fucking Apple computer, sold it to Chris for a profit. And he even sold it to me. It was a gift. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because 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 it's got my Jim Vegeta on the front of it. Okay. I like Majin Vegeta. Yeah, he was an asshole. Yeah. All right. So Uh-oh. if okay, if you had to compare this, if you had to compare uh Haunting in Venice to the other Who Done It movies you've seen, where would you rank it? Top three. Like the 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 yeah, yeah. By and by Who Done It, I mean a movie that like you had to watch in order to really figure out what was actually going on and then you know the the finish of the movie opened up to you. Hmm. You said besides glass onion? I mean like glass onion. You can use glass onion. Or is there another or is there another movie that you would recommend? Because to me I there's other movies I'd recommend over it. Is there another movie you'd recommend over this that has kind of a who done it kind of feel to it? And sorry, I hate saying I recommend over. This is actually it's a good movie. You can watch it. Mm-hmm. I I feel like there's just ones that done it better. That's all. Yeah, there's definitely ones that done it better. But um, top of my head right now, of what can I think of? One night in China. <laughs> <laughs> Last night in Soho. <laughs> but Ooh. no. Yeah. But that but that was a totally different movie. Yeah. Oh god. Um let me think, let me think, let me think. Yeah, we're putting Chris's recall to work. See yeah, I know. Remember some shit. I remember a lot of shit when I need to. Oh. 
I'll tell you right now. I know I I got my selection right off the top of my head because it's one of my favorite movies. What's that? I don't know if you've seen it, The Lincoln Lawyer. No, I've never watched it completely all the way through. The Lincoln Lawyer, never. With Matthew and, I, and I've heard so much. So I heard so many like like the movie was dope. Bro, and the, I, I still haven't watched it. The mo- first of all, the movie is dope as hell. Uh, and they actually have a TV show on Netflix now. It's just started season two. I actually got to watch season two. I started. I haven't finished it yet. Uh. But it's that was the restart of the Matthew McConaughey recent, uh, renaissance. Mm, okay. By renaissance, I mean he was so known for doing uh, romantic comedies mm-hmm. that he took he took a two year break from making movies mm-hmm. and then started coming back with more serious roles. And then the Lincoln Lawyer was that first one where he was just like, like, oh yeah, shit, like he's 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 doing some different shit now. Mm. And it's fucking it's good. Side you know, note, fucking Ryan Phillippe is shorter than I thought. That's the I said the villain in the movie, but the one he's supposed to defend in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's uh, I I met him in real life. He's shorter than I thought. Really? Mm-hmm. Nice dude, really nice dude. And supposedly he's a black belt in Taekwondo, but he's really shorter than I thought. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. But yeah, Lincoln Lawyer. If you get a chance, watch that shit. Okay. Hmm. You know what? I need to because I like I talked about it. You and have I, my, you have my you ha, you have access to my Google Play, right? Or my Google TV, whatever. It's not, not playing. No, I'm pretty sure it's streaming somewhere. No, no, but I'm saying if you, if you look on your TV, I think because I think I set it up. If you have Google Play on there, mm-hmm. I'll give you my access stuff to it, mm-hmm. and because I I own the movie and that has gotcha. all the movies I own, mm-hmm. you can just go on there and fucking watch it. I got all the Spider Mans, all the fucking across the Spider Verse. Fucking, uh, you know, sorority girls one, two, and three, all that. Shit. <laughs> you got the X-rated ones. That's the that's the that's the best ones. Don't, don't you mean those are those got to be the X-rated ones? <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh gosh! All right, all right. Final thoughts on uh, a haunting in Venice. Like, like I said when I first started, not a bad movie. Um, I think it's great for like at home and just something to watch and let your brain rotate for a minute, or whatever. Yeah, but um, not for the movie theater. I'll it was, agree. I'll agree. I think it's a good movie. It's a good watch. Good who done it? You can you know if you just sit there and like follow the story and try to figure out what's going on. Mm-hmm. But don't let the title drive your expectations because that's what I did. Yeah, yeah. And it 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 just I I think that made me I think that made my expectations and my excitement go downward because i wanted to see a scary movie so, so did i i wanted a good thriller i wanted yeah. some jump scares i still wanted to make my brain to think about what's going on yeah and yeah just it it, it out of a scale of one to ten it gave me like a six yeah yeah you know and the fact that and and and, and here's the thing it's the, it's also the fact that it's a period movie mm, at least because yeah. it's 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 a good movie, but like when it's a period movie, it's hard to really connect with the characters, especially yeah. since they're all over the top. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to relate to any one of those characters. So you just gotta just watch the story and hopefully the story engages you. And yeah. how you how you feel about movies like this, you know, it either is successful or not. So yeah, yeah, but not a bad movie. Save it for oh. save it for Friday night with some popcorn mm-hmm. and um. Yeah. A, a good the previous wrong <laughs> <laughs> hole. You didn't hear what I said, did you? No, I heard uh it save her Friday night. And I said what a what a what a what some popcorn in the good the previous <laughs> Bro, we got so many inside jokes. I know. It's terrible. Uh, shit. All right, well. That's the latest episode of Sarat and Chris's Movie Therapy Podcast. Once again, it is your boy Sarat, a.k.a. Mikazi. And your boy Chris Brown, a.k.a. Red Ford Delta. All right. Let me get out there. We out. Like I said, thanks for rocking with us. <laughs>